Hello everyone. So, today we are going to start the clothing comfort related to thermal transmission. In earlier segments, we have uh, we have discussed the clothing comfort related to psychological comfort, psychological aspects we have discussed, then uh, we have discussed uh, neurophysiological aspects and in uh, last segment we have discussed uh, the tactile aspects of uh, clothing, uh, how the or clothing transmit signals related to touch, pressure, uh, all those aspects we have uh, discussed and today's topic is the uh, thermal uh, transmission. So, uh, and it is a uh, dry heat transmission uh, through clothing and how this transmission affect the uh, comfort sensation of human. Okay. So, basically the transmission of heat and moisture although moisture uh, related part we will be discussed uh, we will be discussing in the uh, next segment, but uh, the transmission of heat and moisture through clothing system takes place in uh, two states. One is uh, the steady state condition, uh, another is uh, in uh, transient state condition. Most of the situations the transmission uh, takes place in transient state condition. So, uh, it is uh, the human body is uh, rarely in thermal uh, steady state condition. So, uh, always it uh, gets uh, changed like uh, the process involves in uh, comfort are mainly physical, thermophysiological, -physio neurophysiological and psychological. So, in uh, this segment we will be discussing the thermophysiological aspects of clothing. So, that uh, the thermophysiological aspects it is basically associated with the thermal balance of human uh, body. So, most of the cases we will see this thermal balancing and uh, all uh, aspects are not in steady state condition, but for our discussion we will consider some steady state uh, situations. So, the first priority to be uh, thermally comfortable is that it has we have to maintain our heat balance. Okay. Basically our body core temperature we have to maintain our body core temperature it is a 37 degree Celsius is the mean uh, body core temperature uh, for average adult and uh, it is a range is a maximum range is plus minus 5 degree Celsius beyond that we uh, cannot survive. Okay. So, uh, it is a uh, if it is uh, more than uh, 42 degree Celsius then uh, we will we call it as a condition which is known as hyperthermia and if it is below uh, 32 degree Celsius then it is called uh, hypothermia. So, we have uh, different uh, situations and uh, our clothing's main function is to maintain our body core temperature within the um, comfortable limit, although our uh, physiological phenomenal activities try to always maintain uh, the body core temperature uh, at uh, 37 degree Celsius, but our clothing has to assist that. So, two types of thermophysiological comfort requirements are there, one is the normal in normal condition normal thermoregulation in human body which deals with the normal temperature which exists in the environment and second is that uh, it is a thermal distress where the temperature is extreme either in extreme heat condition or it may be extreme cold condition. In normal condition normal thermal regulation system which, which can be taken care of by our physiological processes most of the uh, time. Uh, our uh, physiological process can take care of that of this normal condition, but the th at thermal distressed condition 
uh, our clothing has to come into picture uh, to make ourselves uh, comfortable. So, uh, normal thermoregulator uh, regulation in human body where it is a uh, the core temperature is there we have to maintain uh, it is a constant temperature it is a measured uh, as a uh, rectal uh, temperature and uh, and the core temperature actually varies among different body organ normally within a smaller uh, range it uh, varies and some organs they are heated by the blood flow and in some portion they are cooled by flowing blood through them. So, that the so that is how the temperature uh, core temperature sometimes uh, varies although it is uh, very close to uh, 37 uh, degree Celsius. So, physical activity also raise our uh, body uh, core temperature that we have seen in earlier segment also the with the uh, high activity. So, body core temperature increases rapidly. So, the rise in uh, core temperature is proportional to intensity of uh, activity level and also maximum oxygen intake. Okay. So, that uh, that we have seen although already. So, the skin now coming to the skin temperature. So, skin uh, that is surface temperature varies from part to part. So, our uh, if we see our uh, at different uh, body parts the skin temperature uh, is uh, different. So, uh, it is a cooler if it is away from the uh, origin of heat that is central part of the body where our heat mainly generates. If we go further uh, away from this central part that uh, like hand or feet it uh, temperature uh, uh, normally it is lower than that part. Okay. So, average skin temperature how to get the average skin temperature? We, we can calculate the average skin temperature by weighted mean uh, method, where the we, if we know the temperature of a particular uh, zone and mean area of that zone. So, if we uh, get the weighted mean, so we will get the average uh, temperature of skin. So, it varies from uh, uh, with the ambient temperature also. So, if the ambient temperature changes, so that the skin temperature and uh, mean skin temperature will also change, but it, it does not change with the uh, level of activity. So, intensity of work does not change the skin temperature, although it changes the body core temperature. So, it is just uh, almost opposite uh, way it works. The core temperature normally does not get affected with the environmental temperature, where as the skin temperature gets affected and reverse is in case of the uh, level of work with the intensity of work core temperature changes. So, if we see the skin temperature at a different uh, zone of our body at a with a with the cold uh, environment and the warm condition they are actually they change. So, at a different uh, zone if you see the finger it is at the cold uh, condition it is as low as 21 degree Celsius okay. and, uh, and uh, foot also it is a 21.4 degree Celsius. So, this is the these are the indicative value and if we see in the warm uh, state uh, warm condition the skin uh, skin temperature for most of the places is almost around 35 36 degree celsius and the uh, difference is less uh, the variation in temperature is less at uh, height or warm condition and whereas in cold condition the difference is from say uh, 21 degree Celsius to say 33 degree 34 degree 34.5 degree Celsius at the back of the neck. So, this at different zone if we see it is uh, uh, the temperature is different and this and that if we take the weighted mean of this uh, different zone we will get the mean skin temperature and that for all in for main all the calculations we use this mean skin temperature as the reference. Okay. 
because the heat flow from our body to uh, environment or if we uh, if we receive the heat. So, it actually the reference point is the mean skin temperature. So, how is it being calculated? So, it is calculated by like a T skin, T skin is the mean skin temperature by taking the weighted sum of the skin temperature over, over various parts of the body like uh, it is a 0.12 of temperature at back. So, if we take the temperature at back skin uh, at back. So, if, if we multiply by 0.12 then 0.12 into chest then we take the temperature in abdomen then we take the temperature of arm thigh, leg, hand, head and foot. So, and uh, this uh, coefficients are approximately the uh, proportion of area covered by uh, this particular zones and ultimately we get the mean skin temperature. And uh, then uh, the mean uh, body core temperature we can uh, calculate by again by deriving the weighted mean between the core temperature and the uh, skin temperature. So, core temperature uh, uh, is uh, it is a basically 2 is to sorry 3 uh, uh, 1 is to 2 uh, ratio it is a uh, that uh, this is a uh, core temperature it is multiplied by uh, 0 0.67 multi plus 0 0.33 into skin temperature. So, at the then we get the mean body temperature. So, this is the way we calculate the mean body temperature and mean skin temperature. Now, uh, that uh, in normal condition how do we get the thermoregulation? So, it is achieved by automatic regulation system that is by our uh, physiology and which uh, matches the heat loss and heat production. So, physiologically it is automatically it uh, uh, gets matched to uh, keep ourselves comfortable whatever quantity whichever quantity of heat we produce and the, that heat has to be has to come out. So, if the rate is imbalanced then we will feel uncomfortable and which is sensed by the brain uh, basically it is um, uh, the system which is located in hypothalamus in the brain and ultimately we get a sensation of cold and warm. But effectively the uh, it has to be balanced. Now, the temperature sensor in the brain respond to the local thermal stimulation from different part of the body. So, at uh, from different part of the body we get as, uh, as we have uh, discussed earlier we get the uh, 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 tactile sensation. Similarly, uh, brain receive the uh, response from uh, different part of the body. Uh, the temperature sensation which is sensed by the thermoreceptors and then uh, the cells in the hypothalamus receive the, uh, the sensations and ultimately it, it, it gets gives the our uh, sensation okay. and which is received by different uh, sensors. Now, on the other hand the, the other regions of the body okay, that, that brain gets the sensation the overall sensation from different parts of the body. But other regions like spinal cord and abdomen, the they, are, they have some uh, thermal sensors which actually respond to the local temperature. So one is the overall temperature, the and another is the local temperature. They also uh, they sense the that local te temperature response. Okay. So the what is thermoregulation? Thermoregulation is a, of a body. It's an interaction. Uh, between core and surface temperature. So, that is the interaction within the body and it's ma it maintains uh, the uh, reference point on the surface and the core. So, that uh, way the it keeps balance. Okay. So, it activates appropriate response when deviates from the reference point of life. So, when um, it always tries to maintain the balance if it deviates then it is activated by sweating, by heavy breathing, by constriction, by uh, dilation, shivering or non shivering whatever way. So, our uh, body physiology always tries to maintain the balance. 
So, in case of any uh, deviation that particular one of this uh, or may be um, at a time many, uh, many such uh, um, uh, physiological activities get activated. So, and uh, apart from this uh, thermal uh, activities, so there are some non thermal factors also which affect the temperature regulation of our body. These are all related to the shivering, uh, constriction uh, all these things they are related to thermal directly thermal uh, activities. So, some non thermal factors like uh, these are the non thermal factors like electrolyte balance and hydration rates like electrolyte with by electrolyte balance we can our body can uh, maintain the thermal regulation like uh, sweating it is a um, uh, by electrolyte balance. So, increased sweat secretion and electrolyte loss in sweat are the most important mechanism in temperature regulation. So, sweat loss and uh, sweat loss by directly sweat loss we try to keep our body cool or by electrolyte loss. Okay. So, and acclimatization that uh, is insignificant changes occur. So, and most important is a local adaptation due to heat and cold involved either by vasoconstriction or vasodilation. So, this actually this is most important uh, for local adaptation, but uh, uh, acclimatization is it is uh, it uh, does not work to it uh, its effect is ins insignificant. So, this acclimatization we have uh, discussed earlier also. So, how to maintain the body uh, comfortable and uh, after this normal thermal regulation now we will discuss the thermal distress. So, thermal distress is that uh, it is a uh, condition when a person is exposed to extreme environment it may be too cold or may be too hot okay. and uh, they actually they cross the threshold limit for the normal thermoregulation system and thus the, uh, the control over our thermoregulatory system is lost. So, this our thermoregulation that the, the system works in a uh, particular temperature range if it goes beyond that then it will be our uh, thermoregulation will stop. So, that means we may stop shivering we may stop uh, sweating. So, all this uh, if it actually it is uh, actually beyond that if it is either too cold or too hot then we will uh, have problem and our uh, we have to bring uh, down the temperature or if it is uh, too hot or uh, we have to warm up uh, if it is too cold uh, by using uh, proper clothing. Now, let us see what is happening in a thermal distressed condition in case of uh, extreme heat condition. So, this is the extreme hot environment and our body core temperature we are trying to keep constant it is uh, within 37 degree Celsius. So, th at that extreme hot tem temperature if we want to keep during the extreme hot temperature if heat loss to the environment is sufficient by sweating and evaporation that we have seen earlier then body temperature will remain at 37 degree Celsius. So, heat loss has to be uh, sufficient at high temperature because at high temperature we, we know that uh, we uh, most of the mechanism it works that it is uh, it uh, we receive our body receive heat. So, only mechanism is that by sweating and evaporation. So, if we can sweat properly and that sweat can be evaporated uh, perfectly then we can maintain our body temperature at 37 degree Celsius, but if it does not then the body temperature body core temperature may increase beyond our beyond that uh, 42 degree Celsius that means, high condition of hyperthermia uh, may take place in extreme hot condition where that if we uh, the heat loss is insu insufficient. So, we cannot lose heat by may be by sweating body will produce excess heat for liberation. So, our body and the bo uh, body core temperature increases. So, this condition is uh, known as the hyperthermia and here what happens our blood pressure will drop. So, we will actually gradually go towards the heat stroke 
heat stroke so may take place so there may be other effects so heat cramp may take place heat rash failure of sweat glands that's a basically very severe condition where a sweat gland will stop secretion of sweat so that we will not be able to actually cool our body by uh, evaporation and sweating and uh, we stop sweating. Similarly, for extreme cold environment, so body core temperature if it is below 32 degree Celsius, if it is extreme cold, if we cannot protect. So, normally we can easily protect our body from extreme cold temperature by increasing the number of layers, okay. but if we cannot do what will happen. So, in that case, so our body will continuously release heat from the body. So, that means heat loss is more than heat production. So, if we do not wear clothing properly, so in that situation will happen and this we can control by proper insulation and then drop in body core temperature. So, body core temperature will gradually come down and it may reach my, uh, below 32 degree Celsius and this situation is known as hypothermia. So, hypothermia condition at, uh, at what happened here? So, at the core temperature, so core, te core temperature should be around say 34, 37 degree Celsius. If it drops by 2 degree Celsius, what will happen? The person becomes confused and shivering stops. So, shivering starts around say 1 degree uh, low or a uh, couple of degree, but if it is around 2 to 3 degrees drop, then uh, person will stop uh, shivering. So, he will become confused. Then if it drops further, so at about 30 degree Celsius core temperature, the person become unconscious. So, that uh, that is very severe condition and our heartbeat may stop so at 27 degrees Celsius so because it is a very severe condition and if one can take precaution proper precaution by wrapping uh, warm cloth. So, that can be recovered. So, uh, basically that uh, around say 30 or 32 degree, below 32 degrees Celsius we should take this precaution this uh, we should uh, actually we are protective clothing, but below 32 degrees Celsius when hypothermia starts then there will be problem. Okay. So, we cannot survive around say uh, 27-28 degree Celsius of core temperature. So, the human body has very intelligent thermoregulatory system to ensure the body core temperature around say 37 degree Celsius. So, it is by vasodilation when body core temperature increases so, due uh, and vasodilation that is uh, increasing the blood flow. So, we can uh, increase the skin body core temperature and also when the blood flow from flow to the skin. So, the in that way our body if it is so body when body so that we can uh, actually release our body heat by excess rate of blood flow and uh, also by sweating. So, these are the mechanism which we can control our body core temperature we can reduce our body core temperature by sweating and evaporation. And uh, if it is at the cold temperature, so vasoconstriction comes into picture where when the body core temperature decreases, so we or uh, reduce the, the by vasoconstriction blood flow is automatically reduced. Uh, so, that it uh, body temperature body heat remains inside the inside uh, the body and also to enhance the heat body the metabolic rate also increases by stimulating the muscles uh, which results in shivering by shivering and uh, higher uh, metabolic rate automatically we can increase our body core temperature. So, this is the system of uh, thermoregulation in our body. So, this is the human body that it is a our uh, the here we sense the temperature from environment by the 
receptors present in the skin, our brain sense and evaluate that sensation and our uh, physiology through physiology shivering, sweating we can maintain our core temperature. So, this is our physiology and to actually enhance to help this physiology in uh, distressed condition we have to use our clothing. So, uh, now what is the importance of clothing in maintaining our our body in thermally comfortable condition. So, with the, we can without cloth we can be comfortable uh, between a temperature of 26 to 30 degrees Celsius. It is a we, it's a comfortable temperature that means, if, if we normally we can survive comfortably without any clothing. So, may be to uh, 26 to 30 or may be 32, 33 that range varies uh, this is the indicative range, but if we use clothing then we can survive comfortably within a wide range of temperature may be minus 40 degree Celsius to, to uh, plus 40 degree Celsius comfortably. Okay. So, that is how that uh, the wide range uh, we can uh, in that wide range we can be comfortable uh, with by using proper clothing. Okay. So, clothing creates comfortable microclimate and that, that temperature of microclimate which is important. So, that it is a and uh, clothing if we see it is it covers most of our body typically say 75 to 90 percent of our body is covered by clothing. So, uh, most of the body as it is covered. So, our proper designing of clothing proper selection of clothing is important to maintain the our uh, body thermally comfortable. So, to maintain the thermal exchange with the environment. So, now let us see for comfortable thermal comfort what are the basic factors in comfort. So, typically it is a most commonly we use we tell for thermal comfort it is a air temperature. Air temperature is the main factor of thermal comfort. If we know the air, tem air temperature then we can we can um, uh, tell okay, whether we will be thermally comfort or uh, not, but it is not true. So, uh, although it is a an important indicator thermal uh, air temperature is an Im important indicator, but it is not the only. So, neither valid nor an accurate indicator of thermal comfort or thermal stress. So, apart from air temperature there are many other factors. So, here it is a air temperature should always be considered in relation to other environmental and personal factor. There are six fa such factors in that uh, for which on which the thermal comfort uh, of a human uh, body it we actually it uh, depends. So, these uh, factors are either environmental factor or personal factor or um, uh, environmental and personal factor plus clothing related factors. So, these factors may be independent of each other, but together contribute to the person's thermal comfort. So, this uh, uh, the six factors which we are going to discuss they may be uh, independent, but effectively all these factors together act give our sensation of thermal comfort. So, what are these factors? So, uh, these factors we can divide into two parts one is environment related factors. So, these are just we have discussed air temperature is one of the most important factors. Then radiant temperature, uh, radiant temperature we will discuss the any warm object which radiates heat. So, that is a radiant temperature like air velocity, humidity. So, these are the factors which directly affect our thermal comfort. So, we will discuss detail air temperature suppose if it is a warm air, air temperature is a hot air, but if the there is air velocity air blowing. So, we may feel different comfortable. 
So, uh, basic com comfort sensation will be different. So, at different uh, at certain air temperature if we change our air velocity or humidity our totally comfort sensation will be different. So, we cannot say only air temperature factor thermal comfort. So, this all these factors are uh, together gives a th thermal uh, sensation. Apart from this four environment related uh, factors, two other factors one is clothing related factor. So, it is a clothing insulation and uh, next is the personal factor. So, it is a uh, what is the metabolic rate and all like a particular air temperature. So, uh, or radiant uh, temperature or air velocity or air humidity. If we change the clothing insulation our comfort sensation will be totally different. So, we have to or if we change the our metabolic heat. So, total comfort sense thermal comfort sensation will be uh, different. So, all these six factors in combination gives us the sensation of thermal comfort. So, let us discuss one by one. So, environmental factors it is if air temperature is there. So, in air temperature this is the temperature of surrounding air. Okay. So, this uh, air is actually uh, our body is surrounded by this air. So, this temperature is very important because our heat flow from body to environment depends on this uh, surrounding air temperature. If it is uh, low then our body our uh, and it is as compared to our skin temperature our body will start releasing heat at a higher rate okay. and if it is high then we will re re receive keep receiving heat. So, air temperature is uh, very important. So, after that it is a radiant temperature. So, what is radiant temperature? The thermal radiation is the heat that radiation radiates from a warm object. So, on any warm object the object may be woven may be fire. So, this that warm object uh, may be anything any warm uh, hot iron okay, this uh, may be heater. So, this that radiates heat. So, that depending on the temperature of that uh, or fireplace. So, we uh, our comfort sensation thermal comfort sensation uh, depends. Okay. So, radiant heat may be present if there are heat source in an environment. So, if it is if there is no heat source, so then radiant heat is not there. So, at the corner of the room if some one uh, fireplace is there, so then it will start it will change total heat equation because radiant heat will start radiating heat and our body will uh, start uh, receiving that heat. So, radiant heat is uh, very important. So, radiant temperature has a greater influence than uh, the air temperature on how we lose or gain heat to the environment. So, that is very important. So, air temperature it is a basically temper it creates the temperature gradient through which our body can uh, release heat by uh, say conduction. Okay. But the radiant heat it is important as we have seen earlier the radiant heat it actually changes with the in a, uh, it is uh, the power of a fourth order fourth order of the temperature. So, that radiant heat is the major factor on our thermal comfort. Okay. So, it is a greater influence how we lose or gain the heat. Okay. Now, let us see our skin absorbs almost as much radiant heat as a matte black object. So, it is a our body whatever radiant heat we uh, our body will receive absorb that heat. Okay. So, we have to uh, we our body cannot normally reflect back. So, whatever heat uh, radiant heat uh, is uh, there. So, if it uh, our it is projected in our body our body will start absorbing the heat and we will uh, will get our body uh, core temperature will get warm. So, that means, 
if we are in front of fire so that uh, and if we are not clothed properly so our body will start receiving the that uh, radiant heat and will get heated up so and uh, and this may be reduced by wearing reflective clothing so if we can wear proper clothing which reflects this radiant uh, heat that radiation so that way we can keep our body cool so uh, the uh, example of this uh, very common examples of the um, radiant heat is a fire electric fire like heater electric heater furnace steam roller oven cooker dryer any hot surface okay any of uh, machinery molten metal so these are these are the source common source of radiant heat and for uh, actually to prevent this radiant heat to heat up our uh, body core uh, to increase our body core temperature we should wear a proper heat reflective clothing so this are uh, this is one uh, 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 some examples of so for uh, say firefighter firefighter for to actually to in addition to other layer to uh, prevent him from uh, radiant heat the some uh, reflective coated fabrics are used so the, there are uh, different uh, these are the uh, typical characteristics of a reflect, reflective coated cloth it should be quiet but that means it should not make uh, sound uh, or uh, it should be breathable if it is not breathable then our um, uh, moisture will get accumulated we may get heated up uh, very high reflectivity it should create comfort it should be washable okay and uh, disperse heat evenly okay it should be lightweight so these are the characteristics of any um, reflective coated clothing so next factor is uh, so after uh, air temperature radiant temperature next temp uh, factor is the air velocity so it's uh, an important uh, factors to control the thermal uh, comfort okay so the because people are sensitive to it so it's a extremely important factor this describes the speed of the air moving across the person which may help cooling the person if the if it is cooler than the environment so it one is that it, it is a, if directly if it is cooler than the environment it directly it uh, comes into contact with the body and it cools the flowing air uh, normally directly cools the human uh, body just like if we stand in for front of uh, ac air conditioner we uh, immediately we the cold air will uh, cool our body even if it is uh, warm so then also our body will get uh, cool so because the movement of air brings the hot air from the body from uh, around the body and our uh, forced convection will come into picture so for forced convection so we need convective heat higher amount of convective heat loss will be there if the the air movement is high but in case on the other hand still and stagnant air indoor okay in indoor environment that are uh, artificially heated okay will cause the total environment stuffy that uh, if it is uh, the air if there is no air movement so uh, it will become humid and uh, the uh, body heat will not be uh, will not be able to actually to come out from the body at a uh, uh, required rate so we will feel uncomfortable so moving air in warm and humid condition can increase heat loss through convection without any change in air temperature so even if the air temperature is high even if the uh, humidity of the air is high if the air movement is there so if we increase the air movement our body will uh, be cooler will have uh, because the convective heat loss will be high. So, if the air temperature is less than the skin 
temperature will be significantly increased increase the actually that uh, uh, it will increase the convective heat loss property. So, if in case of high and humid condition high temperature and humid condition the there will be a loss of heat due to convection and in case of lower temperature also uh, it will significantly increase the convective heat loss we may feel cooler. So, physical activity also increase the air movement. So, if uh, the in case of the stuffy weather in case of uh, the still air if we uh, start moving if we start walking that movement will bring the uh, forced convection. So, that air movement uh, with reference to our body. So, air velocity may be corrected to, uh, to account for personal level of physical activity. So, that uh, physical activity uh, if we increase the relative air velocity will be there and that way we will we will feel cooler. And uh, next is that uh, after uh, the air velocity next is the uh, humidity. So, relative humidity uh, between say 40 to 70 it is uh, it it uh, does not affect the comfort thermal comfort sensation it is uh, our required uh, humidity is between 40 to 70 uh, percent, but if it is more what happens. So, uh, and then our relative humidity may be higher than 70 percent on warm and hot environment. So, if that be the case in a hot and warm environment that at more than 70 percent uh, relative humidity then even if we sweat that our sweat will not get evaporated quickly. So, our body temperature will not be um, actually lowered will not be uh, reduced. So, we may will not feel comfortable. So, in we need a uh, proper humidity. So, high humidity environment have a lot of vapor in the air which prevents the excess evaporation of sweat. So, that uh, that is how the we will uh, at high hot and humid condition we normally feel very uncomfortable. So, in hot environment humidity is important because less sweat evaporation when humidity is high. So, basically humidity effect of humidity is uh, very closely related with the temperature of the environment. So, if it is at low temperature at a temperature is lower then we can if uh, uh, humidity is little bit high then we may not feel uh, that much uncomfortable uh, th then if it is uh, the temperature of uh, air is uh, high okay. at higher temperature if the humidity is high that means it uh, actually it uh, activates our uh, sweat sweating system that, and that will actually affect the evaporation. So, the evaporation of sweat is the main method of heat loss when the temperature of environment is high. So, that way at hot environment the humidity should be low. So, at because otherwise we will uh, feel uh, uncomfortable when the uh, vapor impermeable PPE personal protective equipment we wear vapor impermeable at high and um, high humidity condition at hot condition then we uh, we feel very uncomfortable because we, we uh, start sweating and sweat does not get uh, evaporated and this also happens if the uh, this PPE does not have a uh, pore actually the water vapor permeability if it is uh, it is uh, the if a person wearing this type of PPE asbestos or chemical protective suit the humidity within the microclimate of the garment may be very high and we feel very uncomfortable. Okay. And uh, now we have discussed the four factors of environment related factors. So, next we will class we will continue with these factors. So, some other aspects we will discuss till then thank you.